Hi, um, my name is Kel. Um, I've been diagnosed for six years and I've been living with HIV for 13 years. I'm from apparently New Zealand's smallest city, which is Upper Hutt, a population of 56,000 and a very, uh, a very conservative place, a hard place to be uh, gay, let alone transgender, let alone HIV positive. What makes me happy uh, doing things to, um, to promote the longevity of our planet. You know, I, I put a lot of energy into restoring forest sim systems and mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, what what else makes me happy is is the the support groups and the the groups of friends that I've met in Wellington. Life was never easy. Um, you know, life life got harder and harder as my sexuality and my, you know, my my thought patterns evolved. Um, you know, but certainly 13 years ago, I had come out of a abusive relationship and I was quite empty. I was looking for distractions and. So most of the time I was sunk in a bottle and uh, you know I'd work and I'd drink and that was pretty much my life. Mm. I was hiding my nature from myself and trying to conform to reality, conform to normality. I was suppressing my female side my you know my predisposition to addressing females clothes from my conservative background was a sin was a a perversion and you know and something debaucherous that I fought myself about and um, so yeah I was in a lot of turmoil and I was steadily uh, going downhill. Mm. So finding out my diagnosis of being HIV positive was a um, confirmation that I was cursed and that I deserved what I've got. Mm. And my ignorance being from a conservative place meant that I thought I was doomed and that feeling of being doomed led me to be more self-destructive and the 13 years half of that period was uh, living a secret life every weekend where I would sleep with a number of men and always safe sex but always in dangerous places and at the time of my diagnosis, I'd got to the point where meaningless, cheap thrills no longer satisfied me, and I was dealing with my myself and who I was to the point where I was looking for a partner. And my partner and I wanted to lose the condom, and so we got tested, and hmm. Yeah, my first STD was, you know, the killer and <laughs> HIV. We were looking forward to, you know, like going, um, going wild, you know, losing the con <laughs> condom and <laughs> like going wild and having, having, you know, a weekend away and not leaving a hotel room and instead, yeah, I, sort of I've, I crawled into his flat and didn't leave for five days. Mm. I was living at home at the time 
because my father was sick and my mother was in need of support and so I had to hide from her and hide from my family because I was so well, such a mess. I was um, with a sexual health specialist so it was basically to turn up to a sexual health clinic um, so yeah my, my diagnosis was with a sexual health clinic um, with someone I'd never met before and uh, yeah, the way they broke it was to say do have an alternative form of transport to get home <laughs> and I was still like no you know <laughs> <laughs> so naive. So, mm, it, you know, and even I think the, the words didn't really hit me. So I was like, no, no, I'm sweet. I'll drive home. And, you know, and it, it, it took a while to sink in because I didn't understand the, you know, I didn't understand the repercussions or, you know, I didn't know what it was going to do to me mentally. It, it took a day and a half to kick in. And um, I was with my boyfriend at the time and, and he was understanding and he had, he was like, a, he wasn't a newbie to the scene like me, he had had other partners and so he was a good person to have his support but you know still I regretted, I regretted what I had done to him, I sort of um, picture myself as a wounded animal lashing out in pain and, and he bore the brunt of some of that. It was six or seven years before I told anyone, um, you know, like I, <coughs> I could have, um, stayed with him but his kids knew and his ex-wife knew and um, yeah and I just felt so dirty when I met with them and they gave me this look like yeah you know transgender doesn't dress normal must have got HIV and, and that just helped reinforce my own negative self-perception and mm, so we didn't last and once he had gone from my life then nobody knew nobody knew for seven years mm -hmm. mm. Um, my father had PTSD and uh, he, he lost 10 years of memory and and he was basically a child this you know scary man I'd grown up with was now calling me daddy and and I was doing a lot of care work with mum to give her breaks and you know mum's under such a burden I can't you know I couldn't further burden her yeah and my brothers you know my brothers were struggling in life as well so you know I just did what our family always does and swallow it and suck it up and mm. I went to get my you know so after my diagnosis I lasted two years before um, I was recommended or you know made to go on uh, um, on therapy on on antiviral antiviral therapy and and soon after I went to get my monthly tests after having them you know coping with them and all of that and and I broke down and uh, I broke down to my specialist and then I broke down to my nurse um, you know the best nurse and uh, yeah, they gave me, they, they put me in touch with an emergency services and uh, basically, yeah, I was, 
I was at that point where there was nothing left in the tank and I was on um, I was on a medication that gave a lot of uh, suicidal thought patterns. I don't know how that works, but you know, together with myself, um, my uh, my my self discrimination and um, you know believing I was cursed, you know that gave me pretty much constant suicidal thoughts. So, yeah, I, you know, I was, uh, yeah, I was ready to, if it wasn't for mum needing me, I would have, I would have opted out, you know. Mm. Mm. So I started, um, I started counselling with, with a lady that I'd been put in touch through hospital emergency services and 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 three years later, I started to come to to wake up from some nasty dream, and and I, I I lost my my black clothing, and I lost my my hidden demeanour, where I would hide my sight, hide my eyes from the public, and. You know, by not looking at people's reactions to me, then I couldn't see their disgust in me, and and I started to to find a life after diagnosis. Mm.